Oh, check out this geyser here this morning. Cleanup is underway in Hillcrest because of this. A sheared hydrant. You can see the water shooting into the air here. Crews were finally able to turn it off about 45 minutes ago. Now, this one started about 4.30 in the morning on 6th Avenue right near Arbor Drive. And we're not sure what caused this, but a sheared hydrant, you saw it toppled over to mm -hmm. one side. And look at all that water that was spewing out. Obviously, nearby apartments are there, and cars are parked right on that street. Thanks so much for joining us here at 6 a.m. Everyone, I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Nettie Irampour. On to our other top story here this morning. A big announcement from California's second largest school district when it comes to COVID precautions. San Diego Unified School District, that's the largest here in our county. They say students will not be required to wear masks when they return to class. And class starts for them August 29th. This announcement was made in an email that was sent out. The district says it does not anticipate requiring masks, even if the county re-enters the CDC's high COVID community level. The district does say it'll rely on its own metrics and county data to determine if and when masks will be needed. Also this morning, reproductive health is back in the spotlight. Today, the County Board of Supervisors will discuss a national bill called My Body, My Data. CBS 8's Chris Grow joining us live at the County Administration Building to explain how this bill aims to keep your information from being misused. Good morning, Chris. Yeah, good morning, Eric and Netta. And since Roe v. Wade has been struck down, we've seen local municipalities and even states trying to protect abortion rights here in the midst of that happening. But this is something that will be happening on the federal level. But we are seeing local Congresswoman Sarah Jacobs introducing it. So let's break down exactly what this bill may do and what it aims to do. Now, it's meant to protect your data from being used against you by states that have outlawed or severely restricted abortion rights. Now, according to the bill, it would would limit the personal reproductive and sexual health data that can be collected, retained, used or disclosed to only what is needed to deliver a product or service. Now that could be Google searches or reproductive health data you store on an app. And if you think that could never happen to you, well, just last week, a woman in Nebraska was charged with helping her teenage daughter, 17 years old, have an abortion at 23 weeks of pregnancy after detectives saw their Facebook messages. In Nebraska, abortion is only legal up until the 22nd week of pregnancy. Now, here in San Diego County, Supervisors Nora Vargas and Tara Lawson Reamer will be calling on the County Board of Supervisors to support this bill and to call for its passage by Congress. We spoke with them in an interview. Take a listen to what the both of them had to say. And what we are going to be doing is ensuring that that information cannot be sold and cannot be used to prosecute individuals who are just living their lives. Uh, excuse me, uh, actually, uh, and what we will be going on uh, with uh, our website here, CBS8.com, you can go ahead and look down at the breakdown of what exactly is in the bill. The details there uh, goes a lot more beyond exactly protecting that data. You, again, you can go to CBS8.com and click on that story link. Eric and Netta. All right, Chris Grow reporting live there. Another big issue before the County Board of Supervisors today, a new strategy to track San Diego's homeless population. So supervisors will consider a plan that would keep track of homeless people by name to help streamline the services they receive and find shelter more efficiently. This idea is already successfully being used here in the county to track homeless veterans as well as young people. Both groups have seen reductions in their numbers in the latest homeless count. Along with names, it would also keep track of medical and mental health diagnoses and treatment. The more and more contact that we have with someone, hopefully the sooner they'll get into programs, the sooner they'll, they'll accept help and we can help get them off the streets and hopefully into uh, housing. Information would be kept confidential and would require people to provide consent. Right now, San Diego County jails are on record pace for deaths and overdoses this year. Today, the Board of Supervisors will vote on a proposal from Chair Nathan Fletcher to address that. So far this year, there have been 15 in-custody deaths, with five deaths recorded just last month. That's approaching last year's total of 18, which was a record. Last year, there were also more than 1,300 overdoses in our jails countywide. Fletcher is proposing the department spend $200,000 on an enhanced body scanning program to reduce the amount of drugs smuggled into jails. 
And this morning, take a look here. This taco shop in Vista has substantial damage after a fire. A lot of that destroyed. It happened about 8 o'clock last night right near Bobier Drive and North Santa Fe Avenue. Again, in Vista, investigators say they think the fire started at La Gordy's Taco Shop. Sheriff's officials tell us they received reports of possible explosions, but right now there are no signs that the fire was set intentionally. Thankfully, nobody was hurt there. It's still not clear exactly how many businesses were impacted, but obviously pretty widespread in that shopping center. The cause of the fire is under investigation. And also this morning, businesses in San Ysidro, they are feeling the economic pressure after a turbulent weekend south of our border. A majority of businesses rely on Tijuana clientele. They also hire a lot of Tijuana locals. They come work on their shops, but fewer people crossed this weekend because of all the chaos that we saw. Rosie's Fashion, a clothing store in San Ysidro, has tried to stay afloat for the past three years. They just took another economic hit because of Tijuana's wave of cartel violence. We used to sell a lot last week, and now, because people are scared now, we have less customers from that. Over the weekend, some stores at the Las Americas Outlet Mall and a Starbucks store put up signs of earlier closing times, all for the safety of their employees. And now we're hearing from San Diego's mayor, Todd Gloria, about the violence in Baja. In a statement you see right there, he says he's monitoring the situation and is in contact with Tijuana's mayor and the governor of Baja to keep our communities safe. This morning, President Biden is expected to sign the Inflation Reduction Act into law. The bill is expected to lower the deficit and costs of prescription drugs like insulin. It also includes $400 billion to help fight climate change. That's the largest in U.S. history. The legislation also imposes a 15% minimum tax on large corporations, and there are no individual income tax hikes included. The Justice Department wants to keep the Mar-a-Lago search warrant affidavit sealed. CBS News and other media organizations have asked a federal judge to release the document that led to the FBI operation at former President Trump's Florida home. But the DOJ says doing so would jeopardize its ongoing criminal investigation. And Padre superstar Fernando Tatis Jr. expected to have a number of big meetings this week. So he's serving that 80-game suspension, which we've been reporting on. This was for violating the league's performance-enhancing drug policy. According to the UT, Tatis is having separate meetings with general manager A.J. Preller, chairman Peter Seidler, and his teammates. Tatis's dad, Tatis Sr., claims he developed a fungus after a recent haircut and a medication he used for that had an ingredient that triggered the positive test. Fernando Tatis Sr. says his son is not a cheater and did not look closely at the ingredient list to treat his skin condition. All right, this morning, many students across San Diego County, they're getting ready to head back to class. Exciting times. It's the first day of school for several districts, including the Cajon Valley School District, Cardiff, Dehesa, Encinitas, and Fallbrook Elementary, as well as the San Diego Union High School District, San Marcos Unified, San Pasqual Union, and Lemon Grove School Districts. So we want to wish everyone good luck, all you students, all the teachers, and all the staff heading back to class here mm -hmm. today. I remember one of my first days of school back, mm -hmm. I had a new, fresh denim jacket. Ooh. But you won't need that on no, a day like that, this. That, that no, not going to come in handy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can uh, denim, I don't throw think. that aside. You might be able to throw it aside for quite a while, yeah. too. I mean, long-range models show a cool down, but not anything too substantial for us. Uh, maybe 5 to 10 degrees or so going toward the weekend and early next week. But for today, we're hanging on to the heat and humidity out there. Here is what we've got from Mount Soledad. Gives you a good picture of that dense marine layer to start off the morning. Sunrise 613, so about four minutes from now, and that sunset is going to come at 732. Here's what we have on satellite radar imagery. Clouds along the coast are pretty abundant. Off toward East County, we're running into maybe patchy cloud cover. What we're mainly talking about, though, is going to be that heat inland. 93 degrees for your inland valleys this afternoon. Very similar to what we saw yesterday, and that means that the heat continues. Uh, over the next five days, though, we start to see that cool down. It's really going to hit us toward the weekend and early next week. We still have a daily opportunity for maybe a quick moving shower or thunderstorm, though uh, it's much more diminished of uh, risk than what we saw last week. Last week, we saw showers and thunderstorms pretty plentiful across the county, and in some cases, moving west of the mountains. 
funds. In this case, that onshore flow is continuing to push any activity between your mountains and your deserts pretty strictly. Uh, so while we do see some of that uh, popping up on the screen, there's really not a lot uh, to go around. Temperatures cool down toward the weekend. Friday, Saturday, good opportunity for us to see a little bit more moisture, uh, meaning humidity values are going to rise, but we at least see that drop in uh, high temperatures out there. As far as traffic goes, things have been pretty mellow on the roads out there. We haven't seen any major crashes or collisions pop up, so we'll take you to your current traffic maps and oh well, look at that clockwork. Uh, we've got a couple popping up in the downtown area. Seems like just around the six o'clock hour that tends to be the case. So let's run over, take a look at what we've got going on. We'll zoom in specifically just to about the downtown region. A couple things to note here. One of them is a crash on the five northbound. This is at the 15. Looks like there's plenty of congestion getting onto the Coronado Bridge. And besides that, we also have the right lane blocked with a crash on the five southbound. This is before 17th Street in the downtown area. So plenty to go around just in the last uh, about 10 minutes or so. We'll check in in just a few on uh, any remaining uh, things that uh, popped up on the screen here.